Thank you for joining us for Digital Worship at Grace United Methodist Church in Cheyenne, Wyoming. If you'd like to know more about our church, you can find us on Facebook at Grace United Methodist Church Cheyenne or on our website at CheyenneGraceUMC.com. Thanks for joining us for worship whenever and wherever you are. Good morning. Welcome to Grace United Methodist Church. What a beautiful day, and, and we got that nice cool rain yesterday, and so it's a, it's a blessing to be here, and we're so blessed to be here and, and worship together, even though the world around us is in turmoil. Thank you for being with us today. Would you pray with me? Our most gracious and loving Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing us together this morning to worship. Open our hearts and our minds that we may hear your message through the service. Calm us and center us. And when the service is ended, help us to leave this place secure in your love and prepared to share it in our world. We ask these things in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. I don't think I've ever done Reflection Connection before. And now I know why. It was kind of difficult to put together, but the theme of our worship service this morning is fear. And so where's a good place to start? I, I went to the dictionary. Miriam Webster says, an unpleasant, often strong emotion caused by anticipation or awareness of danger. And here are some synonyms. Dread, alarm, panic, terror, trepidation. I thought real hard to try to remember if I had ever had a time in my life when I was in fear of my life or just thought I was really going to be hurt somehow. I, I, I couldn't come up with anything. I guess I've led a sheltered life. But the thing that immediately comes to mind when you think about fear is our pandemic. I think we all fear that a family member, a friend, or ourselves will contract the virus. How does our faith affect this fear? A part of me wants to believe that my faith will protect me. But we all know that bad things happen to the most faithful people. So how can our faith help us? I really thought hard on this, and, and I wonder, what do I believe that God will do for me? Will he intervene if I pray hard enough? We all have had cases where we felt our fervent prayers were answered. And then I was reminded of that old Garth Brooks song from a few years ago. Some of God's greatest gifts are unanswered prayers. Sometimes what we pray for isn't the best thing for us. Will God protect me? Do I even have the right to ask that of him? Why should he protect me when so many others have suffered death or the loss of a loved one? So here's what I came up with. My faith gives me comfort when I face fearful things. My faith gives me strength to remain calm when I'm afraid. My faith doesn't protect me, but it arms me with confidence. With that comfort, that strength, and that confidence, I can meet anything life throws at me. Amen? Our scripture this morning is from uh, the book of Psalms, uh, verse, uh, chapter 46. God is our refuge and strength, a help always near in times of great trouble. That's why we won't be afraid when the world falls apart when the mountains crumble into the center of the sea, when its waters roar and rage, when the mountains shake because of its surging waves. There is a river whose streams gladden God's city, the holiest dwelling of the Most High. God is in that city. It will never crumble. God will help it when morning dawns. Nations roar, kingdoms crumble. God utters his voice, the earth melts. The Lord of heavenly forces is with us. The God of Jacob is our place of safety. Come, see the Lord's deeds, what devastation he has imposed on the earth. 
bringing wars to an end in every quarter of the world, breaking the bow and shattering the spear, burning chariots with fire. That's enough. Now know that I am God. I am exalted among the nations. I am exalted throughout the world. The Lord of heavenly forces is with us. The God of Jacob is our place of safety. Word of God for the people of God. And now I think we have children's words. Oh, here she goes. somebody taller than me that's awesome hello everybody hanging out in the shade thank you for being here today um i have really good news that i'm not going to tell you how many of you have really good news nice couple yay wonderful what happens if you didn't tell anybody about your good news you're just like ee! It's so hard to keep a secret, especially in my house, because we like to talk. So God wants us to share really good news. And he told the disciples, go out and share really good news. Okay, I will tell you what my really good news is. My really good news is school started for me, and school starts for the kiddos tomorrow. Yay! Is that really good news, kiddos? <laughs> Crickets. I got nothing. So here's the thing about learning and what I'm discovering, because I like this environment where I get to see you and talk to you and run around and say hi to you. But some of us have to teach online. I have to teach online and guess what? I still get to see them and I still get to talk to my students, which is awesome. That's my really good news is I still get to be a part of having a conversation with them. Here's the thing about school. Is, it, is learning just limited to school? Did you like not learn anything all summer because you didn't have school? No, you learn all the time. And here's the other thing that's cool is learning is like sharing good news. There's lots of good things to share. And by talking to one another, by telling your parents, your brothers, your sisters, your grandparents what you're learning is still a part of learning. Learning and good news is infectious not like COVID disease infectious, but still can spread. And so some of you got some wonderful things where you can spread some good news. So if you got a little cup today, you can now spread your good news. I don't know if you guys could see that, but a lot of you have glitter and guess what? This glitter is going to stay with me all day because glitter is also infectious. And so I want you to think about how learning and glitter and spreading good news is a good thing. And we can all talk and learn together. Let us pray. Dear Lord, you are infectious. Dear Lord, help us to share our good news, our joys and our learning and all the things that we are doing even in a new weird world you are still with us help us like glitter to be spread everywhere and spread your joy and good news amen playing musical microphones this morning Hope everybody in the next county can hear me. Uh, <laughs> well, good morning. My name's Pastor Zach. I have the, the pleasure and honor to be your pastor here. And for those of you joining us on Facebook, uh, we're glad that you're with us. We know that whenever and wherever and however we gather, the Holy Spirit is with us in worship. And so if you're watching this live or you're watching it sometime during the week or you're here in the yard, know that we are worshiping together whenever and wherever we are. We started a new sermon series this last week called Back to Basics. 
And this sermon series is all about getting to the basics of who we are as humans and how the basic emotions and actions that are within us can either pull us away from the center of who we are or bring us in closer, not only to ourselves, but to one another and to God. And last week, the basic we began with was strength. It was stress really weird and different basic to come to the reality of. But when we take a look at it, we understand that stress pulls us away from who we are. It pulls us from the center of who we are to the outer edges, where it feels like the world is crumbling below us. And as people, it causes stress causes us to act in ways that really aren't us. And I encouraged each of us to give our stress a name, to say it out loud, to share it with a friend or somebody you trust, and see how your faith begins to grow in the midst of stress. To see how your relationships are changing when you name and own your stress rather than pretending everything is okay. Because it's hard to do when everything really isn't okay. And so today, today we get back to the basics. And today's basic is fear. I know, another strange one. Why are we talking about fear as a basic of humanity? Because fear is one of those funny things that we really, as people, don't know what to do with. See, we're all afraid of something. For me, I have a very reasonable, some, some people would call it unreasonable, fear of snakes. I don't like them. I don't like snakes <laughs> at all. And I can literally count the number of times on one, maybe two hands, that I've met a snake face to face. But I still have this deep-seated fear. And I've never been bitten or chased, and mainly because I do that, that snake dance that everybody does, and I get out of there. But I have no real tangible reason to be afraid of snakes. I've never had a good nor bad experience with them, yet I am just simply afraid. I'm afraid of them. And that fear, my own fear of snakes can be paralyzing. Even doing the dance, I can't go anywhere. I just stand there. And I know. I know that a fear of snakes is a silly example of fear, and there's much more in this life that we are and can be afraid of. The reality of it is fear has always been and always will be a driving factor in our lives and in society. Turn on the radio, or the TV, or your phone, or your computer, or wherever you get your news, or just social commentary on life, and I guarantee you will not open those things without witnessing the fear in which people are promoting, inciting, and using to influence others. Fear is one of those things that abounds. And now there is a time in which fear can be a good thing, which I believe is less fear and more of respect. Respect for creation. That causes us to quickly back away from snakes. Respect for creation that causes us not to go and pet the buffalo. When we have a healthy respect, we treat what we don't understand or don't know with humanity and dignity. See, that's an example of when fear is I'm less about being afraid and more about the respect that lies between you and creation. And there's a really big difference in the emotions and the actions that uh, surround being afraid and being respectful. But there seems to be this constant stream of fear. A constant stream of fear being used in our communities today. And church, the honest truth about fear is it only serves those in power who can control the fearful. That's all fear is. 
Fear is used on a social and global global level to control large groups of people. And fear is used internally by ourselves. This kind of fear is what allows people to ignore the realities in this world. The realities of racism and classism, sexism, homophobia, political divisiveness and poverty, sexual assault, just to name a few of the very real issues we use fear to hide behind. The fear around these major issues cause people to be afraid of their neighbor, to treat others with less than human dignity, because we're fearful of losing control because we are afraid of the other. See, fear is part of the basic of who we are. See, when we see the world around us and the people and the creation that inhabit it, by not being afraid of the unknown, of the other, of change, of power and social differences, it moves us to better understand why there is healthy fear, why there is respect. We see the beauty and diversity in which we were created. When fear is healthy, we see the snake as God created it, and we treat it with respect and dignity. But when fear is toxic, it has the power to separate us from God, from one another, and from ourselves. It has the power to quiet an entire population. It has the power to motivate hate and injustice and can cause us to be reactionary and to act in harmful and destructive ways. When fear is toxic, we rush to get the shovel to kill the snake. There's something about fear that has the power to show us who we really are on the inside. There's this flight or fight factor in fear. And when fear is controlling us in our actions and our emotions and the way that we react to things in this world, we often shed that outer, outer layer of what we want people to see us as. And we show the world who we really are. I want you to take a moment to think. I think about all the people that you've interacted with just in the last year. Think about those who, in a moment of being afraid or being stressed, have done something, have said something that you thought, oh, that can't be really who that person is. We've all had that experience. We've all been in that place. And like stress, fear is a very human experience and one that we are all trying to understand and are in good company since the beginning of time. And with that in mind, we dig into the psalm, Psalm 46, to help us better understand fear and how God is present with us when we are afraid. Here again, this song, this psalm. God is our refuge and strength, a help always near in times of great trouble. That's why we won't be afraid when the world falls apart, when the mountains crumble into the center of the sea, when the waters roar and rage, when the mountains shake because of its surging waves. There is a river whose streams gladdens God's city, the holiest dwelling of the Most High. God is in that city and it will never crumble. God will help it when morning dawns. See, church, fear makes us feel like the world is falling apart. Whether it's our own world or the world in which we have the privilege to live and hide in, or the entire world around us, it's fear. It's being afraid that causes the world to crumble. And yet this psalm reminds us that in fear, when we are afraid, God is with us. But how often do we forget that? How often do we go to the survival mode and cling to all that is familiar, good, bad, right, or wrong, and let fear cause us to cling to what is easy? So 
that we can simply survive. And yet this psalmist writes this song as a reminder that when the world crumbles, God is with us. And the psalmist writes as a reminder that human kings, if you go down into verse 8, it's human kings and leaders that use fear. And fear causes that world to crumble and divide us. But it's not God. God does not use fear as a way to do anything. God doesn't use war. God doesn't use fear. God calls us to end those things, to end war, to end fear. In this psalm, God says that's enough. And church, that resonates in my soul today. Those words, that's enough. That's enough. As we see news reports of another person of color being shot, that's enough. As people justify acts of violence and hate, that's enough. As silence, a non-action. That's enough as fear spews from the mouths of politicians. That's enough as we ignore our neighbor. That's enough as children go to bed hungry. That's enough as people sleep out in the cold. That's enough of abuse. That's enough as we fearfully look upon this world and recluse into the safety of apathy. That is enough, church. There is no place for fear in our hearts, in our actions, in our sanctuaries, in our rhetoric, in our communities, in our home, in our faith. Church, that is enough. For this world to change, enough is enough. And we have to stop buying into fear. The fear the powerful want us to buy, to keep us afraid and silent. That is enough church to get back to the basic of fear is to speak up and to speak out to not let fear control you to not be afraid to not let fear be a barrier of change and a wall between your relationships with your neighbor with your family with a stranger a force that stands to seek oppress uh, fear is a force that stands to seek oppression and justice and love and church, we are not about that. We are about going into this world to seek, to end oppression, to seek justice, and to bring love and hope to the world. And the basic of fear is to remember that God is with us when we are afraid. God is with us when we feel like the world is crumbling. God is with us with hope and grace, not fear and hate. This is why. This is why we have hope. This is why we are not alone in this world. That we do not have to be afraid to change the world. To bring God's hope and grace into this world because God is already here. God is already at work. And God is waiting for us. To hear those words, that's enough. And join God in the work here and now. So let us remember to go with God into the fearful parts of this world because it can be scary. But let us go into those fearful parts proclaiming that's enough. Working to end injustice. To end oppression. To end fear and hate in our homes, our communities, and in this world. And let us go and bring God's love, grace, and hope to a world that so, so desperately needs it. Let us go from this place saying that's enough. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray.
Thank you for joining us for digital worship at Grace United Methodist Church in Cheyenne, Wyoming. If you'd like to know more about our church, you can find us on Facebook at Grace United Methodist Church Cheyenne or on our website at CheyenneGraceUMC.com. Thanks for joining us for worship whenever and wherever you are.